Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in this series of videos, we're looking at how various plants in the diet may actually be contributing towards people's health issues. In this video today, we are going to be examining um, some of the reasons why reducing oxalate in the diet may actually improve urinary tract infections, why it might improve uh, bladder symptoms, why it might improve things like frequent urination, bladder pain, and interstitial cystitis. So here are the key points. Oxalate may contribute toward bladder pain, interstitial cystitis, by causing local irritation and inflammation. They can adhere to tissue and essentially bind with epithelial cells where they cause stress and potentially deplete local immunity. Oxalate can also act as a house for certain bacteria, including E. coli. E. coli have been shown to selectively aggregate in and around calcium oxalate crystals, and this may therefore theoretically implicate calcium oxalate in chronic urinary tract infections, which are unresponsive to antibiotic treatment. Now, in the past couple of videos, we've been looking at how oxalate can have many different detrimental effects on the human body. We've seen how it can get into the cells and cause problems, and we've seen how it can also cause stress to the tissue that it comes into contact with. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of anecdotal reports of people who have seen major benefits in chronic urinary tract infections, bladder pain, um, interstitial cystitis, or even just frequent urination when they go on a low oxalate diet. Many testimonials have actually been made available over on the Trying Low Oxalate group on Facebook, which is run by Susan Owens. And I have put a link to that Facebook group um, below this video. So let's take the time to examine how oxalate can actually be implicated in something like interstitial cystitis. When we look at how the body deals with oxalate, oxalate is absorbed into the bloodstream and it goes to the kidneys. And when it gets to the kidneys, ideally it's meant to go out through the kidneys into the bladder and then be passed through the urine via the urinary tract. Now you can have oxalate crystals which become deposited in the kidney, but you can also have oxalate crystals which actually deposit in the bladder as well, and these are called bladder calculi. Now most bladder calculi are um, made up of uric acid, but there is also a small portion which is made up of calcium oxalate. So just to be clear, calcium oxalate is not only implicated in kidney stones, but those oxalate crystals can actually make their way to other parts of the urinary tract. They can get into the bladder. Now, calcium oxalate crystals have the uncanny ability to adhere to epithelial cells and epithelial cells are what line the bladder and the mucous membranes. We know that when calcium oxalate adheres to a tissue or when it binds to a tissue or becomes deposited, it causes inflammation, it causes oxidative stress, it causes irritation. It's therefore possible that the bladder pain and irritation experienced in something like interstitial cystitis could very well be caused by oxalate crystal adhesion to the epithelial tissue lining the bladder. In fact, I've had a few clients who've presented with this and saw benefit almost immediately when reducing oxalate in the diet and actually providing some supporting nutrients such as magnesium citrate. In the context of chronic urinary tract infections, I believe it's of critical importance to examine the health of the tissue which lines the urinary tract. This is essentially because if the tissue is healthy, then it's probably not gonna be a very hospitable environment for bacteria to thrive in. 
So if there is a chronic urinary tract infection, we need to be looking at why the environment is allowing that to happen. So for instance, examine the health of the mucous membranes. Is there sufficient immunoglobulin A being secreted, um, which is essentially a, an immune cell, which is responsible for battling that kind of infection? Likewise, are there any chronic stresses local to that tissue which are essentially depleting the resources and compromising local immunity. When trying to answer these questions, I think we really need to consider oxalate as one of the culprits in the story of chronic UTIs. Although there's not much research in this area, um, one recent study actually showed that E. coli, which is the most common type of bacteria that you find um, in a urinary tract infection, it was shown that E. coli could essentially selectively aggregate on and around the calcium oxalate crystals. What this basically means is that it can latch onto the calcium oxalate crystal and proliferate from that point. So with that in mind, if oxalate microcrystals are deposited in the epithelial lining of the urinary tract, and they can essentially act as houses for bacteria, then it would make sense as to how certain bacteria can stick around indefinitely. In addition to that, we have the fact that oxalate is well known to cause local irritation and inflammation, and a state of chronic inflammation is likely to deplete the resources of a tissue and reduce long-term immunity. But essentially, chronic inflammation is going to provide a more hospitable environment for certain bacteria to thrive. Likewise, other bacteria such as Pseudomonas and Garnerella have also been found in urinary oxalate crystals. Now, interestingly, there is some research to show that um, urinary alkalizers such as potassium citrate or magnesium citrate can be very effective in reducing the symptoms of urinary tract infections. Now, there are many theories for why this might work, but from what I could see, the predominant thinking is that it alkalizes the urine, and because the urine is more alkaline, it's going to cause less pain um, to an inflamed bladder. However, if we also consider the fact that urinary alkalizers like magnesium and potassium citrate are able to actually dissolve calcium oxalate crystals, and so the benefit of the urinary alkalizers may actually be that it's working on two fronts to reduce inflammation by reducing the amount of oxalate that's adhered to tissue, and at the same time by by doing that, by dissolving calcium oxalate, you're also potentially taking away um, the house for the bacteria. So in cases of chronic UTI, which is practically unresponsive to um, antibiotic therapy, then I believe that oxalate is probably um, somewhere that people should really consider. Calcium oxalate can form stones in the kidneys, but it can also form stones in the bladder. It's theoretically possible that calcium oxalate could adhere to the bladder, causing irritation, causing inflammation, and contributing to the symptoms of interstitial cystitis. Um, and many people actually find that when they reduce oxalate in the diet, their interstitial cystitis improves drastically. Furthermore, oxalate can also act as houses for bacteria somewhere to adhere to and essentially proliferate from. And so the use of urinary alkalizers have been shown to have great benefit in urinary tract infections. And part of this may actually be due to their ability to dissolve calcium oxalate crystals. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please share. You can like and subscribe to my page as EO Nutrition. I am on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, that's all for today. Next video, we're gonna be looking at plant protease inhibi inhibitors, lipase inhibitors, 
and amylase inhibitors. We're going to be examining how various plant foods can actually inhibit our body's ability to break down other dietary components. So tune in for next time. Before then, thank you and goodbye.